Today I'm going to take you through the process of creating this melting liquid RGB text effect with somewhat of a retro 80s aesthetic with its vibrant colours and grainy texturing. This effect is ideal for creating poster art or album cover designs with a retro futuristic style. We'll use a couple of simple tools within Photoshop to create the effect, then finish off the piece with some textures to enhance the retro vibe. Begin by creating a new document in Adobe Photoshop. I'm working at a size of 3003 by 2548 pixels because it just happens to be the dimensions of the background texture I'll be using, which is one of my free film dust textures. Follow the link in the description to download the pack yourself. I'm using number 3. Open up the texture in Photoshop, then go to Select and All, followed by Edit and Copy. In the main document, paste the texture, then fill the background layer with black using the Alt and Backspace shortcut. Reduce the fill of the texture layer to around 50% so it isn't as prominent. Select the Type tool and set out the wording for your artwork. I'm using a font named Bebas Kai, which you can activate in Photoshop via the link in the description if you're a CC user. Scale and position the text centrally on the canvas, leaving a little space for the melting effect. Drag the text over the new layer icon to make a copy. Use the shortcut Command and T or Ctrl and T on Windows for Transform, then right click and choose Flip Vertical. Stretch the text so it extends off the bottom of the canvas, then position it to line up underneath the original. Go to Filter, Blur and Motion Blur. Choose to rasterize the text effect. Usually it would create a smart object, but I don't think there's a way to perform all the steps required non-destructively. In the Motion Blur options, set the angle to 90 degrees, with a strength of around 100. Shift and click both text layers in the layer stack and merge them into one layer using the Command and E shortcut, or the Layer Merge Layers menu. Find the Smudge tool from under the Blur Tool menu group, then adjust the settings in the top toolbar to a tip with zero hardness, strength of around 50%, then ensure the Sample All Layers option is not checked. Set a fairly large brush to begin by using the square bracket keys to adjust the size. Click and drag to distort and blur the stretched text to warp it out of shape. This is where you find that your expensive computer isn't quite as powerful as you thought as it starts to bog down and lag as it processes each stroke. Continue blurring and warping the text to create a liquid appearance, as if the text is melting. Work on the smaller details by reducing the brush size. To eliminate the crisp edge of the original text, it helps to click and subtly wiggle to blur the edges a little, giving it a slightly out of focus look. When you've finished warping and your computer has recovered from its workout, use the Command and J shortcut to duplicate the layer twice. Double click the first duplicate and turn off the red and green channels in the layer style settings. Double click the second layer and turn off just the green channel. Select each of the two duplicate layers in turn and nudge them out of place slightly with the keyboard cursor keys. This will create an RGB splitting effect like an old CRT screen. Select and merge all three layers into one using the Command and E shortcut. Set the blending mode to color dodge to create quite an intense color effect as it blends with the texture underneath. Duplicate the layer and set it to pin light, then reduce the filter around 80-90% to 90 to tone down the effect but allow some of the colourful grainy details to show through. Add a new layer, then with the brush tool active, sample a colour from the artwork and dab some large soft spots around the canvas. We sample a new hue and add some more spots of colour. Set the blending mode of this layer to screen and reduce the opacity to leave a subtle colour cast that complements the colours of the effect. You can customise the colours of the effect by adding a simple hue and saturation adjustment layer. Move the hue slider to experiment with different colour schemes. Now no retro themed piece would be complete without one of my retro cover art textures to give it the appearance of an old VHS tape cover or computer game box. You can pick up the full pack or download the free sample from my Spoon Graphics website. Copy and paste a cover art texture onto the canvas then use the Command and T shortcut to scale and position it to fit over the artwork. Set the blending mode to screen to allow the artwork to show through, but with the addition of the creases and damage texture. The final result is a vibrant retro text effect with colourful glows that are generated from the RGB splitting effect. 
Combined with the grainy film dust textures and my retro cover art textures, it has a retro 80s aesthetic. If you enjoyed this tutorial or learnt any new tips and tricks, a thumbs up on the video would be really appreciated. Stick around for more of my content by subscribing to the channel and be sure to join my mailing list at Spoon Graphics to download all my free design resources. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.